The uh, New York studios of AFA today, where uh, we keep our eye on the news and uh, all that is around uh, each day. Uh, the uh, shot there on the AFA television channel is that of the Brooklyn Bridge, and as you can tell, a, a pretty warm one uh, in uh, the nation's largest uh, city today. And I was just looking through during the break uh, my latest copy of the AFA Journal. And uh, if you're not subscribing to this and reading about it, you really should be. Uh, and I would I would really encourage you uh, to get your hands on uh, the newest uh, edition of the AFA Journal. And you can do that at www.afajournal.org. And one last reminder, the American military... Um, they may be equipped with the finest fighting weapons in the world, but they need resources for their soldiers, specifically those things that keep them encouraged. And we're encouraging you to help supply military Bible sticks to soldiers that are in need. And $25 underwrites the cost of the entire New Testament delivered on a small uh, Department of Defense regulated uh, MP3 device that these guys can listen to dramatized. It is like uh, a theater for the brain. When they plug in their, their ears and listen to the gospel, for example, uh, and when there's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of stories of these military men and women having their lives changed radically by these military Bible sticks. But if you would like to do it, it costs $25 to deliver one to a uh, fighting man or woman uh, in combat, and uh, 800-800-2555 is the number, 800-800-2555. 800-800-2555, 800-800-2555, if you would like to supply a military Bible stick. You can also give a gift online to supply them at militarybiblestick.com. And since they're $25 each, like a gift of $300 would supply 12 uh, men and women the military Bible sticks. Uh, a gift of uh, $200, eight, $100 gift would supply four for uh, men and women that are in... Uh, harm's way right now. It'd be a tremendous encouragement to them. And so I hope that you will uh, consider doing that. Um, we're talking about uh, Todd Starn's article yesterday on foxnews.com. Uh, I have it linked uh, at the afatoday.com page. But an American evangelist uh, was arrested and interrogated. He was, uh, uh, he, that all happened to him uh, while he was on the uh, sidewalk in London uh, during uh, Wimbledon. And uh, he preached from 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 2, uh, a passage that talks about scripture or, or uh, sexual immorality. And, and he mentioned several types. He mentioned adultery. He mentioned sex before marriage. He mentioned uh, a number of things. And then he said, and by the way, homosexuality. He wasn't like he was out there going, God hates gays. He wasn't doing that. He just folded it in with the rest of all the scriptural mentions of everything. This lady got very mad, got up, got a camera, started taping him uh, after a while, and there was no one, was, I mean, he didn't have a crowd around or anything, it was just him through a megaphone kind of blasting to people as they were walking by. Uh, the police came, said he was creating a disturbance, uh, interviewed the woman, uh, she said that he was saying um, uh, hateful things towards homosexuals. And he, he, and the tape demonstrates this. He did not use one homosexual slur. He didn't use any uh, slang about homosexuality. He was very sober in his presentation. Um, and th they charged him with, and this is, this is a charge, use of homophobic speech that could cause people anxiety, distress, alarm, or insult. That's, that's a criminal charge. He spent seven hours in jail, and then the London... That's the London group that helps people into this. Um, hold on, I'll find it. The British Christian Legal Center. They're kind of like the ACLU of, of England, uh, but they came to his aid and, and got him released with no other, no other action necessary. They could have made him stay in the, in the, in the uh, country for a few months. So uh, that wasn't the only story that w was kicking around in the back of my head when I started thinking about today's topic. I actually had written about the Pride Fest um, story where the two young people were, were literally beaten down by gay activists. And the term street preaching seems to invoke uh, reaction, the idea of street preaching. What is, first of all, what does that idea mean to you? So if, so if I go to you here, callers that are already on hold, I want you to first tell me what is street preaching to you? 
Is it holding a King James Bible by the side of your mouth and, and yelling at people, God hates homosexuality? Is that what street preaching is? Um, are there other things that count as street preaching? And if so, what, are, what, what, what is the goal and what should be the goal of why somebody does this if you are openly confronting people in a way that we've seen brings violence or arrest to you, um, I would think you would, you would at least, at the bare minimum, hope for some sort of results out of this. I'm just curious as to your thoughts on this. 888-589-8840. Let's start first with uh, Lewis, who was the first caller in, and Lewis is calling from Houston, Texas. Lewis, welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough on AFA Today. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. Uh, well, sure I think thing. I've seen my examples, well, plenty of examples of bad street preaching, which is just people hollering out into the air, and they don't really seem to be having any results. But, again, like you said, the results are not our job. That's God's job. So if they're doing what God has called them to do, then maybe they will have an effect on one person. A good example of street preaching that I believe is street preaching is, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ray Comfort with Living Water Ministries. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah, he puts the microphone out, he invites people up to the microphone, and, and crowds do begin to gather because as he asks these people these questions, they basically, um, by their own admission, admit that they're guilty of the things that the Bible says. And right. So I think he does have a good effect. And he also did a movie, I think it was called uh, 180, where yep. he was he was dealing with the abortion issue, and he was showing people the, the cognitive dissonance in their thinking and, and people were really coming around and saying, wow, what you're saying is true, and I guess abortion is wrong. So I What's think the, can, but, Lewis, let I, me ask you a question, because I think that that's, I think you bring up an excellent example. Um, I don't think that people, when they run into Ray Comfort, I don't think they think of what he does as being street preaching. Because right. the, a, a couple of things. One, he has a microphone that he's inviting them to come talk to him uh, about whatever the topic is, Right. So it's not, I'm blasting at you, and you have to sit here and listen to me, and uh, you're going to be subject to my agenda. It's, it's more relational. He's like, I want to know what you think about this. And so he puts a microphone. to Now, he still has the opportunity to, to come back and put truth into them in that dialogue. But right. it's not, it's not the, uh, you know, the Bible by the mouth going, thus saith the Lord, repent or burn today. Well, right? you know, some people, though, who do street, some people do what you just said, and, and they're going at it, I believe, from a wrong perspective. Rather than caring about the people they're talking to, they're just trying to condemn everybody. But there is a way, I believe, if you do the street preaching, and I've, ne- I've never personally done it, I've seen it done, yeah, where me neither. While, while you're speaking, somebody may have a legitimate question, and that's when you have a, a, a chance to stop and dialogue with them and explain further what sure. it is. You, and I've seen street preachers praying with people as though... Obviously, they've had an effect. So I think, you know, there's good and bad examples, but but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. Well, I agree. I agree with uh, most of everything you said there, Lewis. And and it's thank you for the call. And what's interesting is, and I have uh, some young cousins uh, down in Texas that uh, love to go to Salt Lake City every summer. And they don't do what they call street preaching. They do more open-air evangelism where they'll walk through the parks And they have been learning uh, apologetics, and particularly as apologetics in response to Mormonism. And so they go to Salt Lake City, they walk through the parks at these big Mormon youth conferences that are going on, and they and they share their faith with with Mormons. Um, It is not a, um, you know, thus saith the Lord, the lightning's coming down, and you're going to all be burned if you don't turn, uh, kind of thing. And 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 I'm not meaning to be overly simplistic in my examples. These are actually phrases I've seen from people that say they are doing street preaching. Uh, 888-589-8840, and I'm very curious as to your thoughts about it. Let's stay in Houston, because uh, that's where Alan is. And, uh, Alan, we welcome you to AFA Today with Kevin McCullough. So glad that you're here. Hey, Kevin, thank you very much uh, for taking my call. Sure and, thing. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, ministry, and we pray that God will continue to bless it, man. Oh, thank and, you, uh, sir. definitely for the young lady uh, in your office. We need to pray that uh, God will reach out and touch her and just fill her up, and she'll come to the love of Christ Amen. through uh, God's love. Hey, um, I guess uh, the best definition that I could give of uh, street preaching is just, uh, you know, out on the streets, uh, in public, uh, speaking with boldness, but, you know, definitely in love, trying to spread the gospel. Um, I was in uh, San Antonio last year, uh, come up out of the Riverwalk, and um, 
after dinner one night and just walking kind of like downtown and right across the street from us was a Hispanic uh, preacher and he was just uh, really just shucked in the corn, you know, right in the middle of downtown, had at least 12 to 15 people around him and uh, wasn't really uh, any aggressiveness or anything like that from uh, from any of the public and he was just uh, really preaching out of Ephesians, you know, and uh, just preaching, uh, you know, just, just God's love, you know. And um, I was uh, also last year uh, in uh, Chicago, uh, come out of downtown one night, walking around uh, with a group of folks. And there was a, a young guy just uh, playing his guitar, uh, uh, you know, pray, uh, playing praise and worship music and, and uh, singing just him by himself. And he had at least uh, eight or ten people around him. And as people would gather around him, he would just ask them point blank if they knew Christ, you know. And hmm. they said no. He would just, you know, well. You know, and the whole time he would just be playing, you know, real uh, ministering, just real, and just in a loving way, <laughs> just like we're supposed to do. You know, I didn't and really see, see anybody come. And you know, it's interesting cross, that you. But nobody, nobody was really, uh, you know, upset or giving him any grief over it, you know. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that particular experience because th- there's an element in that that I really believe is, is very different, kind of like with Ray Comfort, it's very different than what the guy with the megaphone attached to his hip going, you know, um, homosexuality is a sin, which obviously Christians have believed and continue to believe. But when, 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 they're, when, they're, when he's singing songs and then he's developing, I guess what I'm curious about, and maybe it delves into this deeper question of evangelism, is can evangelism really take place outside of the vacuum of a relationship? Because it sounds like what Ray Comfort does is even in a, in an in a instant, he's building a relationship by asking people to engage with him in terms of discussion. It sounds like what this kid in Chicago was doing, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he wasn't a student at Moody Bible Institute or something like that. Um, if if he wasn't saying, "I know music will will uh, get people their it'll put their guard down, and then I can then I can have a relationship with them. I can begin a discussion with them." Um, because I, I just don't know if I've ever seen a quote street preacher with the, the, the Bible by the lips going, you know, uh, turn or burn. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone come to faith in that context. And I know that as a believer, what I try to communicate about Jesus is not that I'm that, that I'm the one that's judging the person that I'm somehow so special that I get to say you're going to hell if you don't do what I tell you to do. It's not like that at all. If I really care about somebody, first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for them, and I'm going to be saying, hey, uh, I know that God has something for you, and I want, them, I want them to test me. I want them to say, well, Kevin, what makes you think that, that, that God does? I want, the, I want them to ask me, have you ever seen God work in your own life? Because I want to tell them the stories of how he has. Um. I don't know if, if evangelism happens outside of uh, the vacuum of a relationship. Um, even, even people that, and, and you know, in previous generations, the big thing to do was take your unsafe friends to the Billy Graham crusade when he'd roll into town, right? So, th- you know, that happens. But that still doesn't happen outside the vacuum of a relationship because someone's inviting you to go. It is very seldom that the person just wanders in off the street and goes, hey, you know, I'm here. And, uh, you, you know, you're, you're talking to me. M- maybe it does. And I'm not diminishing the possibility of that happening. Uh, but I thought something that Alan said was really key, and that was that that, that that young man, he would do music, and then he'd ask a question. Do you know that God loves you? Would you like to know more? Uh, I've seen Ray Comfort's work. Uh, he, he does ask challenging questions. He doesn't let them off the hook. He doesn't say, you know, oh, uh, you're okay, I'm okay, everybody's okay. But he'll say, do you believe you've ever sinned? They'll say no. <laughs> and then he'll break them down. Well, have you ever done this? Yeah. Well, isn't that a sin? Well, I don't think so. I'm a, I'm a good person. Oh, so now it's all about being a good person. But what he's doing is apologetics. He's taking the worldview and answering it point for point, truth, uh, truth against error. Uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on this. Street preaching, its effectiveness, uh, its place. Does it still have a place? in what we're doing today. Let's talk to Tammy in Willis, Texas. Hey, Tammy, welcome to AFA Today. So glad that you're with us. Thank you. 